It's here. Late Monday night, or sometime on Tuesday, depending on where you live in the world, Audi unveiled the production version of its first mass-produced electric car, the Audi e-tron SUV. And while we've heard a lot from Audi in the past few years about what the e-tron will offer when it goes on sale, from its super-efficient regenerative braking and all-wheel drivetrain to its one-stop shop charging services and support for up to 150 kilowatts of DC quick charging, we now get to deep dive a little more on what the e-tron brings to the market. And I'm going to do it all without mentioning that company beginning with T, nor am I going to use the word killer because I'm going to examine this car on its own merits, not how it may or may not beat one car or another in the marketplace. First up, let's talk design. Electric cars are often lambasted by car fans for having looks that only a mother would love. Beauty is in the eye of a beholder on this one. You only have to look at how polarizing the recently unveiled Mercedes-Benz EQC SUV and BMW Vision INX concept are to prove this fact. But I think it's fair to say that for the most part, the Audi e-tron's design is one which will offend very few. In fact, it's one that Audi says is designed to appeal to buyers who don't want their car to look weird just because it's electric. That driving electric doesn't have to mean that you have to give up on traditional notions of what a car should look like. From a distance, the e-tron is unmistakably Audi, with everything from its headlights and wheels to its grille and silhouette confirming its heritage. A little closer up and you will see a few tweaks that betray the drivetrain, such as the fact that the grille is just a silver textured panel without any vents. Yes, Audi could have followed the auto industry habit of making an electric car which stood out from the crowd at stoplights and yelled at everyone how different it was, but in this case it hasn't. And for your average car buyer I think that's a very good thing. It's an Audi first, and in an age where we're seeing more and more cars seeping into the marketplace, I think brand identity is going to become a far more important thing in the electric car world than it has been to date. The theme of just being another Audi continues with appointment and layout that wouldn't be out of place in any car to wear the four rings. There are three digital LCD displays, one forming a traditional dash with faux analog dials, one acting as a central touchscreen infotainment system, and one below focusing on climate control. Similarly, the seats, the e-tron can seat five adults, door handles and vehicle controls are classic Audi. Perhaps the only thing that really sets the Audi e-tron apart from the rest of the Audi family to date is the use of side view cameras and doors in a place of traditional side view mirrors. Called virtual side mirrors by Audi, these cameras relay what they see to a small OLED panel inside each front door. They're a little lower than a traditional side view mirror would be, but they do have some significant advantages. The most important of which is, of course, the reduction in overall vehicle drag. Mirrors create a lot of drag and in an electric car, less drag means more range per charge. Before you get too excited about dumping the mirrors and moving into the 21st century world of side view cameras, though, there's a little caveat I should probably tell you. While side view cameras will be a 1400 euro upgrade option for European customers, the e-tron will ship with mirrors as standard. And in the US, since side view cameras are not legal yet, well, you'll suck with range sucking mirrors, at least for now. Enough of the design because I know you're all wanting to know the specs. And as we've known for some time now, the e-tron SUV is powered by a pair of electric motors, one for each axle. The largest motor is in the rear, rated at 140 kilowatts of output, with an additional 25 kilowatts extra power available for boost mode operation, with the front motor just a little smaller, 125 kilowatts, with an additional 10 kilowatts of boost mode power. Interestingly, the e-tron prefers rear wheel drive operation in everyday driving, switching on its front motor as and when needed. But when they do operate together, they produce about 300 kilowatts all told. That gives a stoplight sprint time of around five and a half seconds. Yes, that is slower than some electric cars out there, but a lot faster than most gasoline SUVs, including the Audi Q7 3.0 TFSI Quattro. However, the e-tron is not the fastest out there when it comes to overall top speed. It's limited at 124 miles per hour, 200 kph, which is going to be fine for most markets, but may prove disappointing to some on the German Autobahn. As I've already alluded to, Audi says it has the most efficient regenerative braking system of any electric car to date, capable of recuperating far more than 90% of all kinetic energy under braking. In fact, Audi says that it all but eliminates the use of the friction brakes and on a recent press trip illustrated the fact by getting journalists to drive down the famous Pikes Peak Highway in Colorado. 
in the 12.4 miles the e-tron added nearly 7 kilowatt hours of power back to the battery pack. Under the floor of the e-tron is a 95 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack which like the Jaguar I-Pace uses pouch cells arranged in modules. There are 36 modules in each pack and all in all the weight of the battery pack is just over 1500 pounds or just under 700 kilos and as is now the norm is low profile ensuring that there's no intrusion into cabin space. Like many electric cars on the market the rear of the battery pack is slightly taller to make use of that under seat area but the rear seat passenger footwell is completely flat a plus for that middle seat passenger in the back the battery pack also has active thermal management using heat conductive gel a heat transfer plate and full liquid cooling system to keep the battery pack at just the right temperature but perhaps the most important thing about the battery pack is the fully integrated aluminium crash structure that's been designed to help keep individual modules safe in the event of an accident it's a clever lattice structure which should transfer any impact forces around the battery pack rather than through it, reducing the chances of mechanical damage which would then lead to electrical shorts and potential fires should the car be involved in a really nasty accident. These motors and battery pack work together to give a quoted range on the WLTP cycle of 400 kilometers, which is just under 250 miles. Again, given the size of the battery pack and the vehicle itself, that's not super impressive but the thing that is is the car's onboard charging capabilities aside from an 11 kilowatt onboard charger as standard and the option to double that up to 22 kilowatts in some markets where the e-tron will be sold the e-tron has next generation ccs charge capabilities that allow it to charge its battery pack to 80 percent full in just under half an hour at a blistering rate of 150 kilowatts. That makes the e-tron, at least for now, the fastest charging electric car out there, although Audi isn't investing in its own charging infrastructure. Instead, it's working with partners like Ionity in Europe and Electrify America, which of course is part of its parent company Volkswagen, to ensure that customers can charge at 150 kilowatts as easily as possible. Audi is also following the lead of some other automakers and including a portable charge cable or granny lead with the e-tron that is far more powerful than some we've seen in the past. Capable of operating at both 120 and 240 volts where applicable, it can provide a total of 9.6 kilowatts when paired with a suitable connection such as a NEMA 14-50 in the US. On top of this, Audi has partnered with Amazon to offer a home charging service that allows customers to order and have installed a charging station for their e-tron, the same way they'd order any other item on Amazon. Now to the bad bits, price. The e-tron is not going to be cheap. In the US, it will start from 74,800 US dollars or equivalent for the so-called Premium Plus model, while the Prestige model will add another 7,000 US dollars to the price. The range topping Edition 1 will retail from 86,700 US dollars or equivalent and of course will include all of the bells and whistles you'd expect from a premium mark including seat massaging, premium sound system, driver assistance tech, and much more. Like so many electric cars before it, you can put a deposit down on the e-tron now for 1,000 US dollars or equivalent, but when you get the car does rather depend on where you live. Europe will start seeing the e-tron on the road from early 2019, although that will only be first edition models, while US customers will have to wait until later next year to get their hands on one. Full model availability, is likely to not happen until the end of 2019. So that's it. That's the Audi e-tron SUV. I've not seen it in the flesh, but I'm hoping that I'll get a chance to drive one sometime soon. I love the exterior styling and the available features, although I'm not a huge fan of that triple screen interior. It's got too many different layers for my tastes. But for me, the biggest highlights are the battery pack safety and that super fast charger rate. My biggest criticism? price. Granted, Audi is a premium brand, but this car's sticker price puts it way out of reach for most buyers, just like so many other electric SUVs coming to market. And until we see a more affordable version, maybe something closer to a Q2 or Q3 in size, then this remains an aspirational car that most won't be able to buy, which, as I'm sure regulars to this channel will know, is my main criticism of so many cars on the market today including the iPACE and that other brand that I said I wouldn't mention in this video. Let me know if you agree or not with my thoughts in the comments below.
That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Subscribe to both of our channels. And if you'd like to, support us by using one of the two links below or by buying some swag from our swag shop. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.